Good morning and welcome to the Word Live. This is Elder Charmaine Ernest, and I am here uh, on the Word Line this morning. I'd like to welcome you. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that you would open our hearts, open our minds to receive all that you have for us. Today, with the Word Line, we will be speak, I will be teaching for 15 minutes about from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 20 through 24. And on the screen, you can see it says, reading the scriptures, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified, made righteous in his sight. For by the law is the, king, is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Verse 22 even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.24, being justified, made righteous freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, brackets mine. I'm a definition person, and there are church words, and sometimes everybody thinks everybody knows what these words mean, but I'm a, I'm a teacher, and preachers proclaim, but teachers explain. So when I'm looking at this, when it talks about the law in these scriptures, we're talking about the law of Moses. The law of Moses was given to the Jews, not to the Gentiles. A Gentile is anybody who is a non-Jew. The law does not justify or make righteous anyone. The law does not remove sin. It makes sin known. The law does not save anyone. The law is the 10 commandments plus 613 other commandments. The law is about doing, earning. It is a performance-based religious process. It is not relationship-based. In another word, is justified or justification. Justification uh, is the action of declaring or making righteous in the sight of God. Just as if I had not done it, justification is free from sin. The next word is righteousness. Righteousness and justification means the same thing, free from guilt and sin. It's, it, in, our, in our scripture today, it talks about the righteousness of God. That is when God gives you his very own righteousness as a gift when you accept him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he, speaking of God the Father Jehovah, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Jehovah, in him, Jesus, brackets mine. Now, if you ever hear somebody say, our righteousness is as filthy rags, you must realize that that's an Old Testament teaching from Isaiah 64, 6. That was pre-cross. Before Jesus died on the cross, no one was born again. Before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, so everyone back then could not be righteous because they were not born again. Their sins had not been paid for. Now we are post-cross after the death of Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection. That applies to us. We are new covenant born again believers. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Our sins have been forgiven and Jesus took our sins and gave us his righteousness, the righteousness of God. The next word that we want to define is grace. Grace is, un, the common definition is unmerited favor. Now, favor is an act of kindness beyond what's due. Now, Jesus substituted his life for your life. He did a favor because we should all be dead in trespasses and sins. But Jesus took our sins and, and he died for the sins of the whole world. 
and gives you the righteousness of God if you only believe. That is called the great exchange. Jesus takes your sins, gives you his righteousness, the righteousness of God. And so the word grace, G-R-A-C-E, is an acronym that I often use, and it is God's righteousness at Christ's expense. The expense that Christ paid was his life so that we could receive the righteousness of God. The definition for uh, grace is Titus 2, 11 through 15. And grace is a person in the person of Jesus. And grace is the gospel message that we are to teach. It says, but the grace of God, Jesus, has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He, Jesus, gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good works, brackets mine. And in verse 15, it tells you, you must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary. So don't let anyone disregard what you say. This is not greasy grace. This is not giving people permission to sin. This is the message that we must teach. This is the gospel. Grace is the gospel. And the next definition is redemption. He paid the price to give us this righteousness. Jesus paid the price to buy us from slavery, from bondage, to purchase us from the slavery that Adam had thrown us in and given us over to Satan to redeem us. Jesus paid the wages of sin with his death so we might freely have this gift of righteousness. In verse 21, Paul is saying that now, apart from the law, apart from doing, earning, and achieving, God is offering righteousness, not man's righteousness, not the best man can do, but the very righteousness of God, his righteousness, to all mankind, unto all and upon all who believe. And in verse 22, this is described as the righteousness of God. It is a right relationship with him that he is offering to mankind. It's not by performance of the law. It's not by the works that man do, but it is through the faith in Jesus Christ's righteousness that will make men and women acceptable before God. Now, why do we need this righteousness? How many times have you heard for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? I've heard that from the Roman road to salvation all my days. But you know what? Because, you know, that is why uh, verse 23 is why do we need this righteousness? Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And this is most of the time taken out of context. When you take the, the text out of the context, what you're left with is a kind. Because this is not talking about sin. This in context is talking, because in verses 20 through 24, it's talking about the righteousness of God. They never told me about the righteousness of God when they told me about this particular scripture. So we need to teach it right. And in verse 24, being justified, made righteous freely. The New American Standard says, being justified is a gift, declared righteous as a gift, freely without charge. If I give you a gift, and then I ask you to give me something in return, it wouldn't be a true gift. God justifies us, makes us righteous, declares people righteous before him as a gift. He freely gives it to you. All you have to do is believe in Jesus and you become justified and made righteous. How do you do that? How do you get justified and made righteous? That's what verse 24 tells us. It says, by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, he does it as a favor because of his kindness. Redemption means that he paid the price 
to give us this righteousness, to buy us, to purchase us from the slavery that Adam caused by submitting to Satan. Jesus paid the wages of sin with his death so that we might freely have this gift of righteousness. Everything God did was righteous and just. God didn't ignore sin. He didn't sweep sin under the carpet. He said, it must be judged. The wages of sin is death. But I tell you what I'll do. I will pay the penalty of death myself because all man was contaminated from the seed of Adam. So we were all contaminated with sin. But he said, I'll pay the penalty of death myself in the person of Jesus Christ. In, in, in verse 34, it tells us we are being justified, made righteous freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And don't forget 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he made him, he, Jehovah, made him Jesus who knew no sin. Jesus lived 33 years and never sinned. He knew no sin, but he made him to be sin for us. When he took all of our sins, my sins, your sins, the sins of the whole world, and put upon him while he was on that cross, he made him to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus. And in, in Titus 2.14, it says, he, Jesus, gave his life to free us from every kind of sin to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. And in verse 15, it says, you must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary. So don't let anyone disregard what you say. And this is the gospel of grace. And right now, I want to offer the gospel of grace to you. I want to offer Jesus to you. I want you, I want you to off offer you the opportunity to be justified, to be made righteous, to be saved, to receive the grace of God. I want you to be able to know that you have the righteousness of God and you can have it right now. If you repeat these life-changing words after me, that's found in Romans, the 10th chapter, the ninth and the 10th verse, that if you would believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised Jesus from the dead. I now receive my salvation and my righteousness. I now receive by forgiveness of my sins and eternal life. I now receive my divine health, my divine mental and physical healing. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. And I wanna thank you this morning. If you just got saved, the Holy Spirit just came to live inside of you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And you just got born again. You just got redeemed you just got uh made righteous all of that just happened to you just now in your spirit and you know what you got to do for the rest of your life the rest of your christian life you don't have to get saved again born again again no you got born again now you must begin to renew your mind so that you can be transformed into the image and likeness of god because when you see him you will be like him but you're gonna to need to renew your mind, change the way you think so that you can start thinking of, about what happened in your spirit. That's what you need to learn, your spiritual identity. Who am I in Christ? What do I have now that I'm in Christ? And what can I do now that I'm in Christ? So these are the things that we will teach you on this, Rome, on this word line every morning at 745 Central Time. Uh, just please, just show up. Just, just show up and let the Holy Ghost do what he do. So you have a blessed day in the Lord. And I'll see you the next time. So look forward to tomorrow morning. Same place, same time. Bye-bye.